Jupiter, and I'm joined here by Abdallah from a and Transportation. Abdallah's out of Houston, and he's been a client for a few months. Thank you so much for doing this. No Abdallah. problem. No problem. My pleasure. Yeah, no worries. So it's actually funny. Um, when we first hopped on this meeting, I saw him. I was like, whoa, that's not how I pictured him. Because, you know, you hear someone on the phone and you're like, oh, OK, he's probably like older. Right. And so that's the first thing I asked him. I'm like, uh, so how old are you thinking he'd say like 21 or 22? And you're 27, right? Right. Yeah, I'm 27. Yeah. And right. then he's got like a really cool story. So uh, tell me, how did you get into this business, Abdullah? Because it's pretty, pretty cool um, what you were telling me before we started recording. Right, right. So it's actually, it's really interesting. Uh, we kind of just stumbled upon, you know, the, the limousine industry. Uh, my mom and I back in, um, say around 2011, 2011, okay. 2012. Uh, we, uh, my mom had some, you know, medical issues and, uh, she was, uh, she used to work just her regular job and, um, like a nine to five and then after that uh, medical issue she we we decided to take a, a break and just go you know go for to travel for a little bit after she was out of the hospital and um during that time we were just really reflecting on you know what we're gonna do i've been you know raised by a single mom and so we've kind of you know always shared you know the kind of the responsibility with her uh from early on and so she would always, you know, just talk to me and just, you know, let me know, you know, hey, how, what are we going to do? What can we do? And at the time we had a little bit of money uh, that we had saved up. And um, and we always like had this idea of wanting to start our own business, but not really knowing what exactly what business what we just always um, I've, I've, I've always had that mind of, you know, just I, I want to own my own thing, but I just I never had any like any one particular person that could help me you know with oh hey you should do this should do that and so that was the kind of the perfect timing uh the timing really uh in a way that we're just we're put in that position of okay we gotta do something now and um we had met someone actually who took us to the airport um uh, he was um he had i mean it, 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 he owned, he was the owner of the transportation business and okay. he talked to us, so he said, hey, I have a few cars and it's a good business. And just just kind of touch on it really briefly. But I don't know what happened, but during that ride, but it was just it kind of just like a light bulb just, you know, just turned on for, for the both of us. And I'm like, we should do that. I don't know why we didn't have any background about the limo industry at all. And uh, but that was like, we were just both like, yeah, that, it's a good idea. And I remember whenever we came back, I told my mom, I said, I, I was still at the time, I was still in high school, right? And yeah. so, I, so I couldn't. <laughs> uh, so I told her, I said, how about this? Let's you go work, uh, uh, work let, like apply for for the job for a, to be a driver at a, one of the companies here in Houston. That's smart. And, uh, and then that way we learn all the like all the details of what's going on. And then we're then we'll start our own business. And uh, and she did that. She worked for maybe six months uh for a company or uh, maybe a few uh, two companies here in houston and okay. um and you kind of just learned the inside and out of the business how things work how is the driver supposed to you know take care of the clients how where is that how do you deal with the airport stuff with the licensing and all of that stuff and after six months we got our first vehicle it was a suburban um and then you know just we went off from there and just we got the first car started networking with a lot of people uh, right away and uh so a lot of people a lot of the work that we did was just like kind of just subcontract you know yeah like affiliate other, work affiliate work yeah from other companies and then uh uh you know just little by little one step at a time we you know we started learning how how can we get in in the doors with hotels how can they give us trips uh that way and then we learned uh then we actually we we ended up um having our first contract it was an airline and we did their transportation for them in Houston here. It was a two year contract. Wow. And at, yeah. And at that point, that was just like a turning point. Cause at that point I was just like, ah, I see, I see what the bigger, what the big companies are doing. And that's what I should be doing. Because at the same time I saw, you know, all these big companies had really nice cars, you know, look very professional, the offices and all of that. 
and at the same time we we were like the you know the 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 single operator kind of yeah the upstart and, <laughs> yeah the upstart so and uh, which was good at the time because that's all we had our hands on but i wanted to be that you know that big company and move forward and just be not just be that that you know uh loan operator and just yeah you know, yeah car. owner operator yeah 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 i didn't didn't want to be that and so little by little after that first contract i just i learned so much about you know how these big companies, what, what they do to, you know, to, to earn more business. And, uh, a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of the work that they do is contracts, yeah, uh, companies and, you know, getting in the door with them, networking. And then obviously the, 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 um, uh, the private side of things over, you know, it's just like doing ads and things like that. So yeah. at that point I didn't really, that was probably the biggest mistake um, I that we've done. But I mean, you know, hey, we that's how you that's how you learn, right? Yeah. Uh, Wait, what we, was the biggest mistake? Uh, oh yeah, I'm about to say it here. Oh. Is that we didn't do a lot of like ads and uh, the, like the marketing that we're doing now. Yeah. Um, I think we should have done that way, way, way earlier because that would have uh, that would have taken us to a whole. We would have been way further now than 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 where we are uh but we just you know i just kind of just focus on the contracts getting like the bigger clients how, how did uh, you get that first contract that's like crazy yeah so actually so one of, we had a friend a family friend who worked who was like the operation manager of a company that was going out of business that had that contract uh, and so the person perfect. that was going out of business kind of just you know just pushed us in the door with the with the airline and he said hey these people are good they can do this they can take care of it and uh and pretty much he he he, he well that the manager became worked with us a lot um in the at, at the in the beginning that then he left but he at first he worked with us a lot so he helped us you know just you know learn what we need to do how things work invoicing scheduling all of that good stuff um because it, it, it was a lot of work uh, at the time and so we had to go to a whole different uh, to another level really quickly yeah but uh but we learned from that contract we learned so so much uh and like i said i just you know at that point i was like okay now i see where things can go and still for the next few years uh yeah for the next few years i still just my mindset was just like get contract get contract like get contract yeah or network with people that can get me you know uh, you know in the doors uh until recently whenever we started doing the the marketing i was like wow i should have done that like i'm i think i heard this one time i forgot who said it but he said if you think marketing is is expensive uh uh you should you should really find out what the the price of not marketing is i i love that quote and i'm not sure who said it but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's way more expensive because Absolutely. like you said where would you be now Right. Exactly. Exactly. That. But, but it sounds like you learned a lot about getting con. Well, I mean, I guess that one was uh, you got an assist on, but um, right. it's probably good. You learn how that all works, contracting with these big companies. For sure. That was helpful. For sure. Which, I mean, which did help us now because we do have other contracts as well. But, uh, but I think just doing the marketing is very important because i think even that would even will will lead i believe so that it will lead to potential agreements or contracts in the future so um i think it's very important and i think i i, I would have you know liked to, to do it earlier but it's just that i think the biggest thing was that the idea of like you know just spending all that money we, it was hard and especially like whenever you don't have like all that you know whenever your budget is still small or whenever you're a smaller company you're like you're just trying to save whatever you make which is the biggest mistake i mean now i think we you know if you want to go into it a little bit later is like you know we kind of changed budgets we kept you know increasing the budget that we're spending on ads because they're they're, they're effective they're they're working and they're making us more money so it's like you know the more you're spending on marketing the more you, you'll get back so it's yeah really it's not smart to not market yeah oh wow like that's so cool so it's kind of funny like a lot of people go to like business school or marketing yeah you, you didn't need to man you've got you've learned more than anyone would going to a four-year school 
doing what you've been doing. The funny thing is, it sounds like you started at right around the time someone would have gone to college, right? You went to the school right. of Knox. Or did yeah. you go to college at all? So it's funny. So I did go to, to school right after high school to high yeah. to college. And I wanted to be an engineer, right? And But whenever I saw the money that we were making in the business, I was like, huh. I like th there is no ceiling to what you know by being a business owner there's no ceiling to where your things can be and uh, i i i mean my mind didn't really comprehend that before but once we did once i did experience it it was just like wow this is a no-brainer to me i was like I'm, i don't want to be an engineer i want to be a yeah person. and um and so we i stopped going to school at the time i was like okay let me get the you know the business on its feet because it was it was really hard to juggle both at the same time and I did eventually go back to uh, to college to get um, a psychology degree, which a lot of people are telling me, like, oh, why don't you get a business degree? I'm like, no, that's oh, a better you? idea, man. Yeah. You're learning business now. Exactly. What you need exactly. to know is psychology. That's that's actually brilliant that you thought about that. Exactly. Because I, I, people tell me, oh, why don't you go business? You, you're, I was like, well, I already learned the trade by doing it. So why, you could teach why, it. Why, <laughs> yeah. Why am I going to go to school to for someone to teach me to do something that they probably didn't even do? No, exactly. Yeah. All theory. And mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's super. That's interesting. So it was a psychology degree. That was probably interesting. I've taken a few psychology courses and it's yeah, it, 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 it did help. I wish, you know, it, 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 they went a lot more in depth, but it's it was kind of still, you know, just general knowledge and i think and that's what it is even like with a business degree right it's still it's all general it's like you can't yeah it's, it's really hard to say okay well i got this point and i'm gonna apply it here and it's gonna exactly work. how do you take what you've learned and then apply that knowledge to something that can make you some money right or I, like that, that, that's why i came to you mark because i i i think you're the best professor uh, for uh for <laughs> limousine industry so yeah well, yeah, it helps when you have someone who listens to everything you say. So uh, so we met back, I think it was in November. You started the beginning of December, right? Yes, that was, yeah, December. Yeah. And so I remember uh, I was shocked after like the first month. I always check uh, like a client's stats in the CRM they use in the app um, to see, okay, are they keeping track? And Abdallah had kept track of every penny um, that they had booked. And why that's so important is, and you know this, but you want to know, okay, if we put in, let's say 1500, how much are we going to make? What's our return on ad spend going to be? And now you, you know that, and you're confident in that. And I forget what the first month, it was a good first month though. It was like something like six or seven times return on ad spend, right? It was something around like 10 K right around yeah. there. Yeah. I think it was around the first month was around 10 K plus or minus, but yeah. yeah, around 10. Yeah. And and we had you at about a $50 a day ad spend or was it 60? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was the $1,500. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 50 a day. That's usually where I start most people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was almost a seven X return on ad spend, which is really good for the first month, especially when you're just doing what you're doing. Uh, but you were also figuring out price points, right? You right. want to like talk about that? Like, cause that was one thing that a lot of people, they don't figure out, okay, who am I competing against? Where do, where does my price need to be? So what did you do to figure that out? Right. So what I've noticed right away from the ads is people were calling and there was different, I could tell, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of experience, maybe a little bit of just kind of reading people a little bit, uh, or like what they're saying. And uh, some people like they they were like more like companies that were booking for, you know, their executives or, or whatever. And they didn't really care about the price much more about they just cared more about the quality of transportation that we can provide, like newer cars, professional drivers, you know, meet and greet and things like that. OK, and some other uh, customers were a lot more um, conscious about, you know, the, the they were looking for the for the best price or at least uh, not not the most expensive, but something that's reasonable. And uh, but at the same time, what made what, uh, you know, how we were able to close those um, those uh, customers was that we provided good customer service. So I was always like, you know, I knew exactly what to tell them on the phone. 
and uh it's not and again it's not like rocket science or anything it's just you know kind of just basic things just treating them you know good and you know talking to them nicely and listening to what they want uh, what what exactly what they want and just providing that and not trying to you know like to rip them off or whatever so it's it's just basic things and uh whenever whenever you break that ice with the customer especially over the phone and whenever they don't know you they're coming from out of town or whatever it it makes them you know a lot more at ease and just kind of trusting that you're, yeah. you that you'll take care of them and uh, just building that rapport with them, with the customer and uh, over the phone and just, you know, um, and build, building that relation, uh, that relationship. And um, and so just it, it was it, it took a little bit of time to just kind of get get the pricing right, because at first I just wanted to see where like h- how this works. Right. So at first I kind of my prices, I set my prices a little bit too high. And I saw that that didn't work. That was I was just you know it was it was obviously they were shopping around. Yeah, they saw that was the highest price, and they're like or or up there, and so they're like, nah, I'm not interested in that. And uh, and then later I started lowering the price, lowering the price until I kind of figured out where the market is really. Uh, yeah, how other companies are are pricing their um, uh, their their trips. And um, and I just kind of set it at first, like pretty low, I would say, not 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 extremely low, but like I mean, like as probably as low as it can get in the limousine industry, or as low yeah. as, like like the limousine market. And then from there, I was able to kind of see, okay, this is how much I can increase. This is the this is the price point that I want to be at, right? And yeah. because at the same time, I don't want to always be the, I'm not trying to sell the lowest price no. car. <laughs> I wanted quality customers, but at first I thought it was good to just at least make the money that I'm spending. That way I'm not, that way we're not losing money or we're not like spending more than what we're making. Yeah. And then from that point, we started building actually like repeat customers. And, um, and from that point, I kind of just started to price it a little bit different and just increase it slowly to to that price point that I think is most fair that, you know, that's good for us as a bit as you know, with the size of business that we have now. And um, and I kind of just figured that price point by just looking at what other companies are doing and uh, the kind of service they're providing with with the type of vehicles that we have and uh, and just set it based on that. Nice. OK. I like what you said there, though, because you didn't say, oh, you know, just it's just about the lowest price. That's all people care about. Um, They really like it is that rapport that you were talking about. I think that's a huge thing. And if you go into it thinking all people care about is price, um, it will almost people will almost hear it over the phone. You'll be a little more dismissive once you can tell, oh, this is a price shopper tire kicker. You get shorter with them. You maybe just spit out a price and you're not, you know, trying to have a conversation, which that can go a long way because they're like, all right, if this is what the guy on the phone's like, what's our chauffeur going to be like? Right. Right? And if you're just short with them and, you know, just spit out a price and you're not asking questions, like I'm sure you're pretty damn good at this now since you've probably (laughs) done so many of these. Yeah. Uh, You could probably train people on how to do this Um, because, yeah, you can't just be the lowest price, right? You won't make any money. So. I like that. So you started kind of high, then you kept bringing it down and you figured out, okay, now like lots of people are booking, but I'm, I'm right. a little too low. And then right. you came up a little bit and now you have a pretty good um, idea of where you need to be at. Right. That's correct. That's right. Nice. And so um, it's uh, the end of March. So uh, you've been doing this for almost four months now and yeah. each month, has been a little bit better, right? You started at 10 and then I think the next month I was looking at your numbers earlier. Was it like 12 or so? Yeah. Or yeah. And, um, and this might be your biggest month. Yeah. Hopefully. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every month it's been going up steadily. Uh, yeah. Good. So the first month was about 10. The second month was like 12 around 12, 13, 12. Yeah. I think 12 and third month month was like 14 yeah uh, or 15 14 15 and uh and um and the this month 
we're looking at 17 right now and we're still got a few days and you know we're still we still have bookings coming in i think wow. we might have even passed 14. wow nice yeah. 17 i'm sorry not 14 17. This week. yeah and so and then we spoke uh was it it was yesterday or the day before no no the day before yesterday i think and we were just talking about uh ad spent right because you're like hey because you bumped it up to a hundred a day. How long were you at a hundred a day? You... Oh, oh yeah, we yeah. So along the way, also we did increase the the, the spending as well to seventy, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, the first time we bumped it up to no, I think sixty. I think we went to okay sixty, and then uh, yeah, because I remember you said the 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 fifteen hundred was like the, the, that's like the what you recommend people. Yeah, minimum. Are yeah the month, yeah and then right away i think i think after the first week even because he's uh after the first week i was like yeah let's just keep it at 1800 and then we went to um like 2000 yeah and then um i don't even know where we're at now. yeah no well <laughs> so we went to i remember you were at 100 today i don't know how long you were there i don't think that long but i could be wrong mm -hmm. which is pretty crazy because you know, you start at 50 and that probably to you at the time, you're like, damn, this is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. I remember just, just, just kind of <laughs> just to give you some background. And I'm sure a lot of people have done that too before I use your service. And again, cause it was me that was trying to do the AdWords and I didn't know how it worked. I was just kind of, you know, just throwing just a shot in the dark, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, my spending was probably 150 a month. Or like two hundred dollars a month, <laughs> yeah, uh, and expecting you know to get you know thousands of dollars back, and so it was, it was kind of it wasn't realistic at all. Yeah, and I think that's that's super common though. You know, people yeah, want to start. Oh, can I start a five hundred dollar month ad spend? And I found over time, you know, I, I would actually lose more clients when I would let them start at seven fifty a month in ad spend, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, or a thousand a month even. And I'd be like, man, why? Right. And then it was obvious why I'm losing these clients because you just don't get enough leads right. and therefore not enough bookings. And therefore you're like, why am I even doing this? And so yeah. now I'm like, okay, $50 a day should be the minimum. And then just the other day, um, based on my recommendation, right. we're doing, we're trying 150 a day, which you probably never thought you're like doing the math. That's like 4,500 a month. But right. The, the main thing is you've been keeping track of the numbers. So like you have the data right behind it. You're going to be an engineer. You're a numbers guy, I'm sure. And you're like, look, if this machine, if I put a dollar in, it's giving me at least $7 back each month, maybe a little bit more. Why not put more dollars into that machine? And exactly. so it takes a lot of uh, operators a long time to go an extra hundred a day in ad spend. Like that usually takes most people almost a year. And you've done a lot quicker. And it's just like you were saying, like, uh, about, like, um, if you think marketing is expensive, try not marketing. It's right. kind of the same thing with ad spend. It's kind of like, well, where would you be, you know, in a year from now, if you keep it at 50 a day, you know, how much is your business going to grow? But if you're at 150 a day, a year from now, like, in the, like, each month, you should be a little more profitable. Each month, your business becomes a little more well-known. Each month, hopefully you get more and more repeat customers and who knows, maybe even some contracts, right? Because right. when you're doing that kind of volume and that's what you need to be on the look for is, okay, who are these potential opportunities that I'm on the phone with? Is this an executive assistant for a law firm? If they're calling you, they don't have a company they work with, right? And that's right. why with you handling this, like I already know, you know, within a year, you're going to probably hit seven figures just because I see your trajectory and I can tell your focus and, um, and you're asking all the right questions like, Hey, what can we do to, to increase, you know, our revenue? And, and now you're thinking about, uh, potentially, um, getting into buses, which I think is a good move. Right. Really yeah. Move. So actually really, but you know, because of the ads is why we got our third vehicle. Well, not like third from the smaller. We we have other shuttles, but we don't. That's for something separate. But like the 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 SUV, we got it because of the ads because we're already getting a lot of calls. People ask yeah. for 
so we went and bought one and then we got the sprinter as well because of the ads because of the results we're seeing so i mean it's it's it, it, it's really and that's one of the things too like whenever you're a small operator and we don't you don't already have an existing customer that's ordering from you uh it's hard to to expand because then are you then are you gonna get the vehicle and then wait i hope someone calls or are you gonna wait until someone needs something and then go buy the vehicle and so uh so with the ads it's 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 very predictable and after that you know first when did we get the so we we started in december right early december yep. by the end of december we bought the suv and then uh, wow that was pretty quick <laughs> yeah because we, uh, we i mean we're just seeing that people are calling and then asking for for suvs and we're like okay i see the trajectory of this i was like okay we're gonna need one and now it's making the suvs making more than the than the vehicles that we've had before nice uh, uh it's getting booked way more and it, it obviously it's a, it's a bit more expensive like whenever we're selling it so it's it's a really it was a good move and same yeah. with the sprinter uh when did we get it we got it uh earlier this month we were getting a lot of calls for the sprinter and yep. we went I figured we you would yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and we we bought we bought one so and then now you, you mentioned the buses i think there's also a lot of uh, uh, demand for uh, sh larger groups and i think that that would be our next move to uh, to jump up and so i mean with and again without the ads really and really without you, Mark, not just the ads, but like without you, Mark, I don't know if we'd have done that. I don't know how long it would have taken us to make that move. And so, I mean, I really appreciate it. And uh, I mean, this goes back to the the good work that you've done um, on, on, you know, on, on uh, getting us all those good leads. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, it's, you know. I can just kind of tell pretty quickly who's going to do well, just because you're just like another client I had in Queens. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw his interview. His name's Andres. I never did a follow up with him. I need to, because I interviewed him like six or eight weeks into it. And he was like, yeah, things are working. Um, and now it's like, he's just like killing. It. I was telling you on the phone and, but he was just like you. He called me like every month. Hey, what can we do to make this better? What can we do right. to make this better? And, and, Actually, I think it's interesting you're getting into buses. I think that's a good idea. It's like we said, man, there's less there's less competition, right? Because right. the cost to get a sedan or SUV, you know, isn't isn't that much. But once you start talking about a bus, then you know it's a lot more expensive. And it's like the chicken and egg thing, right? Do you get right. which one comes first? Yeah, yeah. Do you get yeah. the work and then get the bus? Which right. honestly, that's what I would always prefer, right? Yeah. Make sure you have the work, then buy the vehicle. Exactly. Because if you buy the vehicle without the work, it's kind of like it sucks. It sucks. It, you <laughs> know, you got this big payment every month. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so um, that's why you know, like I was saying yesterday on the phone, like let's let's give it a shot. Let's see, you know, how many leads you get. Let's see how it goes. And um, and then also you were talking about um, really being strategic about what vehicle you buy, right? Like. Right. You need to see, all right, what's the need out there? What are the leads coming in for? But also like, you know, who's your competition? Who, who are you mainly competing against? And is there a need in the market, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, that, that's, yeah, one of the biggest thing is to really understand what's, what's needed. Uh, because like, you know, like we talked about, like in Houston, for example, there's a lot of smaller operators. And um, so that's like, you know, the sedans, the SUVs. And so whenever people are shopping around and which people were, were most likely they'll, they'll shop around and maybe not just for pricing for, you know, also for quality, but at the same time, they don't want to overpay. Right. And yeah. so, uh, it's, it's really hard to compete with smaller. And I mean, even coming like, you know, obviously we're, and we're still small, we're not like, we're not big by any means, but, uh yet right yeah yeah <laughs> or yeah. <getting> <laughs> yeah but it's just like the small whenever there's a smaller company it's there it's it's harder to compete with them whenever you're bigger or whenever you're expanding right yeah and so the so here for example in houston it's a lot of sedans and suvs that are the the loan or the the small operators or yeah. school operators and so it's hard to compete with prices with them, but the, the, and the, the more you go up in like the size of the vehicle, 
which there is a huge demand for here in Houston. We don't have public transportation and there's a lot of business. There's a lot of, uh, you know, things, events and stuff happening. In oh, Houston. yeah. So there's always a need for um, for group transportation. And um, and there are large companies here that obviously that, you know, that that cater to that market. But it's, I think it's easier to compete in that arena than to have to compete with, you know, how low can you go with the prices, right? Exactly. Uh, and uh, and so it's just, it's, it's, I think, understanding the market that you're in is because I'm sure like different cities might have different needs. Like maybe a smaller city may, there may be a, a huge demand for sedans and SUVs because there's not that many. And so yep. that would be the, you know, the, that's where people that, that do business there should focus on. And so it's just, it depends on the market that you're in. And so I think it's, just understand being aware of what's you know what's happening around you like whenever i'm driving uh just myself i'm always looking around i see what buses what companies are doing what i yeah. i'm always like looking and paying attention to what's happening and um and that also that always you know gives me an idea of what can i do what can i do better uh what service um do I think I'm able to provide with, you know, with either a better price or just because we're still a smaller, smaller company or, um, or, you know, what's needed. That's not, you know, that's not there. Yeah. And so it's just, it's just knowing those things is very helpful. Yeah. 100%. Well, you're going to kill it, man. You're four months in. I can't wait to do, let's do a follow-up maybe in a year. For and, sure. Uh, yeah. It'll be really, in, it'll be really interesting to do that. Well, I typically ask people, Hey, would you recommend limo market? I don't think I need to do that because of <laughs> everything we've discussed. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, Abdallah, I won't take up any more of your time, man. You're killing it. Thank you so much for doing this. For sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. I mean, it's, again, it's, 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 uh, I think I, I was just, I, maybe I was just a good student, but you're also, you're, a, you're the, you're a good teacher. And so, you know, without having your kind of your guidance and, you know, your, your knowledge in the area, um, that's, I mean, without that, I would have not been where I am now with the, with the transport, with the, with the size of that, that we're growing, uh, too. So, I mean, thank you for, uh, for, uh, for doing this. Oh yeah, of course, man. I love it. Yeah. Thanks again, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care.